6.6 in Nelson Functions talks about how to determine sinusoidal equations from graphs and tables of value. Now, before I start this lesson, I want to remind you that there are a number of different equations that you can have for each one of these sinusoidal functions. Different in that they can either be sine graphs, cosine graphs, positive cos graphs, negative cos graphs, negative sine graphs or positive sine graphs. So you really have four options. And if you recall when we talked about graphing sine and cosine functions, if you had sine theta like this, negative sine theta would be the graph that starts on the axis and goes down. So this would be your negative sine theta. So if negative sine theta and you have positive sine theta. Remember, the key to sine difference between sine and cosine is that sine starts on the axis. Now, the cosine function goes from the top point to a top point. There's your positive cos, cos theta. So it goes from positive 1 to positive 1 and down to negative 1. No, it does not start on the axis. That can't be overemphasized. And the negative cos function is going to go this way. Now, the other thing you should note is the difference between a sine function and a cosine function in terms of what we call is a horizontal shift. So if I had a cosine function, let's draw a cos function like this. There we go. There's cos theta. Now you know it's 360 degrees all the way around. Now it's important that you can divide this into quarters to figure out how far, how far before I'm one quarter of the way through the graph, or halfway through the graph, or three quarters, or a full graph. So remember that these are divided into quarters. So that means that if I started right here, this would be 90 degrees. Now, if I wanted a sine function from a cosine function, so cos theta is the same as a sine theta. If I wanted sine theta, that's what I'm trying to say. If I want sine theta, sine theta is cos theta, but shifted to the left. See, so sine should have started here, right? This would be a sine function here like this, let's see if we get this in the right spot. It's gotta go through here, like that. So here would be your sine function. So the sine, the cosine function is a sine function shifted to the left. So if I wanted to start here as a sine function, this would be cos theta plus or minus. Now remember, if this is negative 90 degrees, if, if this goes to the left, then it's plus 90 degrees. So that means that cos theta, if I have y equals cos theta, that's the same thing as y equals sine theta. Now remember, if I was here, I'd have to move it here, so plus 90 degrees. So sine theta plus 90 degrees is the same thing as cos theta. Now you can double check these things if you have a calculator. So if I said, uh, let's just do something to check it. So let's say the cos of, I don't know, 120 degrees is minus 0.5. So is that the same thing as the sine of 120 plus 90 degrees? Yes, look, see, it's the very same thing, minus 0.5. So the cos of theta is the same as the sine of theta plus 90 degrees. That's going to be important if your teacher asks you to give two equations for the function. And I'm going to try to do that as we're going through some of this check your understanding part from your textbook to make sure that you could give two or maybe even three or four solutions to the same equation for the same graph. Okay, let's start with this equation here. Um, it says determine an equation. Now they have to say that, an equation, because it means there's many different equations depending on where I want to start my equation. If I said it started here, then it could have been shifted, right? Everything can be shifted because it's a continuous um, 
periodic function, it repeats. So when you're trying to give the equation or find an equation, you want the equation that is in the simplest form. Don't make it difficult. And unfortunately, your textbook tries to make it difficult. So if you find an equation and you go to the back of the book to check your answer and it's not the same, try plugging in some value for theta or x or whatever is in your equation and test it with yours and see if you get the same answer for the same value of x. That will determine that yes, you were correct in your work. So let's start with this graph here, uh, the blue one. We're going to decide what type of function should I use for this. Now, when I'm saying what type, I want to know should I use a negative, uh, negative or positive sine or cosine. So this is the negative cos theta. So if you look at this function, it starts at its maximum. What starts at a maximum value? It's not on the axis. Here's the axis here. So I'm going to choose a cosine function. So let's just go through these three first of all and determine which functions we would use. So for this one, I would use a positive cos function. This one, it starts at the lowest point. I would use a negative cos function. And your textbook isn't going to do this. I don't know why. Someone messed up. This one starts at the highest point. So I'm going to use a positive cos function. Okay, so let's go back to this. So we said positive cos. So our axis is f at x, so I'm going to say f at x is going to be equal to, now, positive cos. So I'm going to write cos here. I need to know the amplitude. What is the amplitude? What is the distance from here to here? So it's one, two units. Make sure you check your scale on the side. They change depending on the equation, or the graph, sorry. So I'm going to say that's a two cosine function. Um, the axis is at six. So that means out here I have to have plus 6. Now the only thing I've left to determine is the, um, the period. Now remember, because I'm starting here, which is a cos function, there is no shift. We're starting on the axis. So I don't have any horizontal shift, so I don't have a d value. I just need to determine k. Now remember we had the equation period was equal to 360 degrees divided by k. So that means that k is equal to, maybe do it like this, 360 divided by the period. So anytime I want to know the k value in these equations, that's the little equation that I'm going to use. Okay, so how far is it before it starts to repeat? Um, so if you look, it starts here and it ends here, so it ends at 90 degrees. So that's my period is 90. So k is 360 divided by 90. I'll write that here. 360 over 90 degrees. So k is equal to 4. So we put in the 4 here for our k. We still have an x. So we have cos of 4x degrees. 4x degrees plus 6, and that's the equation of this. Now, could you give me a different equation for it? What if I said I wanted a sine equation? Okay, so I'm going to say, well, f at x would be, it doesn't matter if it's sine or cosine, it still has the same amplitude, it still has the same shift, so the only thing that happens, that's vertical shift, the only thing that's going to change is the horizontal shift. So I'm going to say sine and it's going to be 4x. Now remember I told you that this is plus 90, right? So it's going to be plus 90, all in brackets, degrees. Now you're going to say, well, how do I know it's plus 90? Like if I did the sine function, wouldn't it be starting here, right? Right here. So that value isn't 90 degrees. So if I wanted to know where this graph started, and we did this in the other lesson, all you have to do is solve for this little equation here to determine where your graph should start. So let's do that just to check. So 4x equals negative 90 degrees. x is equal to, what's minus 90 divided by 4? Half of it is 45. 
I don't like doing that kind of calculations. 90 divided by 4. It's probably something really basic. 22.5. Well, it's not really. Okay, so x is minus 22.5 degrees. Now, if you look here, that means this point right here is minus 22.5. Each of these squares is 30, and it isn't right on the line. So that's that's good, right? So that's where the graph I'm going to write this is where the graph starts. If I wanted to describe it as a positive sine function. So positive sine means we start and we go up from the axis. Okay, so that's that's just one of them. We've got lots to do here and stick with me because if you figure this all out, you'll ace the rest of this unit. Okay, graph number B. That was A. Graph B. So I look at this function and I said already that it's going to be a negative cosine function. It's starting at its lowest point. So f at x equals negative. Now I need to know the amplitude. So look at this graph. It goes only down one and up one. So the amplitude is one. So I don't have to put anything there. Just negative cos. Um, the axis is at two. So out here, I'm going to have plus 2. Now I just need to figure out the period again. So the period this time, from here to here, is 180 degrees before it starts to repeat. So remember, trough to trough, or peak to peak, uh, one complete cycle, whatever way you want to measure it, just look for the easiest way. These ones are right on the line, so I, I chose the 180 degrees. So 360 so k is equal to 360 divided by 100 and, oh, 180, I said, right? So that's 2. So my k value is 2. So minus cos 2x. I might want to put this in brackets. I think I would too, just like that. Because sometimes if there's a shift, and I should have moved this over. Ooh, plus 2. Okay, so that's, that's this one. Now, can you give me a sine function for that? Well, I could say f at x is equal to, now, if you look here, if we started right here, see how we would have a negative sine function? So we could use a negative sine function and then just use the 2x, um, 2x minus 90 degrees. Or you could go from here. Let's go this way. So let's say that's going to be sine of 2x plus 90 degrees so that's shifted to the left or if I went shifted to the no sorry that would be a negative sign this one right negative sign 2x if I moved it this way then I shifted it to the left so that makes this plus 90 and plus 2 so that's another example another equation if you solve this little equation what would you get for x negative 45 right so that means right here is negative 45 degrees now let's see it's right in between so that's right or you could have used a positive sign or so these are all the same if you plug in a value for x you'll get the very same thing so i'll say 2x minus 90 degrees plus 2 so positive sign 2x plus 90. Now if you solve for this, you would get 45, right? Positive 45, and that's where we are right here, halfway between 0 and 90, 45 degrees. Okay, so that's B. Now let's go to C. I'm not going to do um, all three or four equations for each of these, just if I think it's uh, something a little different. So this one now, I would say, okay, this is a positive cos. I'm starting at the highest point, peak to peak, um, or that's not the easiest to read, is it? This one right here to here. So between 90, is that 90 there? I'm having trouble seeing right now. Now zero to here. How far is it from here to here? That's 90. These are 30s. So that's 120. One complete cycle is 120 degrees. So K is going to be 360 divided by 120, which of course is 3. 
My amplitude, I go from minus 2 to 0, so that's 2. So f of x is equal to 2. It's a positive cosine function. 2 cos 3x, no shift. 3x, I put that degrees in the wrong spot there. 3x, and then minus 2. And there you go. So don't be confused with the back of the book. Okay, because they're going to give you different answers. They're going to use sine graph, all these stupid things. Sorry, not stupid, different. This is the easiest way to do it, though. Don't make it complicated. You can check, put in any value for x into the equation that you get, and check it with one that's in the back of the book, and you'll find that you're going to get the very same answers. Okay, so that's ABC. Number two. I'm going to slide this up now. Determine... A function that models the data in the, data in the table and does not involve a horizontal translation. Okay, so for this one, you're going to have to make a quick little sketch. Okay, so let's just make a sketch here like this. And at zero degrees, it's at nine, and then it goes to seven, and then it goes to five. So it doesn't have to be accurate. Just nine, seven, five, seven, nine, and seven, five, seven, nine and they go back to 5. So if you look, we've got this. Right? There's my lowest. Now it says 9, 7, 5. Where's the axis? At 7, right? It's right in the middle. So there's my 7. What's the amplitude? A is equal to 2. Our shift, C, is 7. And our period, it says if you look at the graph again, I don't know if you can see that on here. So 97579, 0 to 180. This is 180 degrees. So if that's 180 degrees, then K is equal to 360 over 180. K is 2. I'm starting at the highest, so I'm going to use, uh, did they say X's and Y's? Yeah, it's X and Y. So y is going to be equal to 2, I'm using a positive cos function, 2 cos, um, our k was 2, 2x two degrees plus 7, done, just like that, nailed it. Okay, so let's go down to, oh we didn't do number 3, got room for 3. A sinusoidal function has an amplitude of 4 units and a period of 120 and a maximum of 0 and 9. Determine the equation of the function. Okay, so let's just write it on here. Okay, so I'm going to make a quick sketch of it here. It has a maximum of 0 and 9. So that's 9 up here. It has an amplitude of 4. So what's the lowest it's going to be? Now amplitude, remember, that's not the entire range. So that's only halfway. So this is going to be minus 4 is going to give me the axis. Minus 4 more is going to give me the minimum. So this is going to be 1, 5, 9. Add 4, add 4. The maximum is here. So it's going to go like this has a period of 120 degrees and there you go everything you need to know for the graph the amplitude is 4 from here to here the period is 120 so k is 360 divided by 120 which is 3 and shift it up 5 and most importantly it's a positive cosine function we started at the maximum height so Let's call it y equals, amplitude is 4, cosine function, 3x degrees plus 5. Okay, remember this 3 here now means that um, 120 degrees, so we'd find, have to find our k by dividing that by 120. Now, it looks a little different when we do these number 4 questions here. So let's go to number four. It says determine the equation for each sinusoidal function. And we're going to look at one here. So draw your axis on. Figure out your amplitude. 
So amplitude from here to here is 3. So let's do it right over here. Am I still on the page? Yes. So 4A1. Now, you have to determine if you're going to use a sine function or a cosine function or a positive or a negative function. So if I look at this function, I would say, let's start it right here. Or you could have started, uh, see this one doesn't go through one of the squares, so this is a little more difficult to determine that value. This one is very clear, it's right on the line, that's at 1. Okay, so I know it's been shifted to the right 1, which will mean minus 1 to my graph. I'm starting at the lowest point this time. So I'm going to choose y equals a negative cosine function, a negative cos function. So it's a negative cos function. The amplitude is 1, 2, 3. So 5 to 8 or 5 to 2, either way, you get 3. If you don't, you didn't divide it properly. Okay, and I know it's going to be plus 5 out here because it was shifted up 5 units. And now I need to know how do I figure out the k value. So the period goes from 1 to 7. 1 to 7, that's 6. So k is 360 degrees divided by 6. So that's going to be 60 degrees. So in here now, I'm going to put a big bracket because I'm going to write 60 times x shifted to the right one. So it's going to be 60x to the right one means minus 1 degrees plus 5. Okay, so that's a negative cos 60. That's my k value, just like in the equation up here. So maybe I'll just write it out here in case you can't see it. So it's a cos bracket k x minus d square bracket degrees plus c. Okay, so I've got everything here. Now you could give me another equation. Um, what if I asked you for a positive cos function? So positive cos function would mean I'd either have to start it here or here. Right? So let's say I started it right here at 4. So that means the shift here now, let's say or y is equal to now positive cos function, 3 cos 60 x mm, plus 4. It's gone to the right 4, so that's minus 4 degrees. Same thing, plus 5. Okay, so I know it's looking a little, little difficult and confusing, but I think if we keep going, keep chugging away here, we'll get you through. Okay, let's take a look at um, 4A2. 4A2. It's this little one right here. Do, 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 do. Okay, so let's figure out. We're starting at the lowest point. What do you do when you start the lowest point? You choose a negative cos function. So I'm going to say negative cosine. Now, before I write cos too far apart, I'm going to check the amplitude, and I notice that it goes from it goes from one. This would be a half, right? That's a half to one, to one and a half. So it's, it's a bit of a guess here, but I would say that means it's going to be 0.5. It's not really the most accurate graph in the world, but it looks like it's about halfway. So I want negative 0.5 cosine function, um, shift it up one. Oh, I've got to get this out of the way. Didn't leave enough room. Okay, so plus one, let's move, let's erase this here. We don't need that now, got it. Okay, I need to know the period. So plus one out here, the period for this little cosine function, mm, it's done between zero and three. So that means uh, the period is three, 
So 360 divided by 3, 360 divided by 3 is 120 degrees. So I write cos, oh, I should never have done that, bracket, 120x. Now is there any shift? No, I'm starting right on the axis. 120x degrees and plus 1. Done. Okay, and again, I suggest you look at the solutions in the back and compare them to this. And you'll find it's exactly the same. So always look for the easiest equation or the equation that requires the least amount of movement from the y-axis. So the final one here, graph number three, I'm going to erase this again. We should just do those in our heads. I don't need to write those down for you, right? You can divide by three. Graph three. Okay, look where I'm starting, on the axis. Which way did I go? Down. If I go down, that's a negative sine function, right? Negative sine. So I'm going to say y is equal to negative. Now the amplitude goes from 2 to min minus 2 to minus 3, so it's only a 1. So I don't have to write anything, just negative sine, um, period. So one complete cycle, stop. 4. 360 divided by 4, 90. 90x degrees. No shift, because I'm starting right on the axis. And the vertical shift, that meant horizontal shift, right? There is a vertical shift down 2. And that's as easy as it is. You know, like, I'm telling you that your textbook is trying to make this much more difficult than it is. Let's just rip through these last three and then maybe um, in another exercise, I'll do some more um, word problems. There's a couple there that we could look at. Okay, so let's take a look here. What would you use? I'm starting on the axis. On the axis. On the axis means sine. Goes down first. That means negative sine. So y is equal to negative something sine. Amplitude. Check your scale. This goes by 5, 15, 20, 25, 30. So it goes up 5, down 5. Amplitude is 5. A negative sine function. One complete cycle right here. Check it down. One complete cycle in 2. So this could be, I don't know, could be 2 days, could be 2 months. This is what's going to happen in your word problems. Um, they like to use calendar years, like things that happen, like seasons and temperature changes. Okay, so our 2 is our period. So that means our K is 360 divided by 2, which is 180 degrees. X degrees. We need an X in there because it would we could use some value for X to calculate different heights. Okay, so I have... Um, we're doing this one, right? So negative sine, there's no horizontal shift because I started on the y-axis. 180x degrees and shift it up 25. Okay, so what if we wanted to do, um, maybe we should talk a little bit about another function. What if we wanted to, well, we'll do that for another one. Let's do two. That's 4B1, 4B2. Okay, this one has a shift in it, right? Look, see, it doesn't start on the axis. It doesn't start at the lowest or the highest point. So I need to choose another function for this one. Not another function, but one that involves a shift. So what would you like to use? Hmm, doesn't really matter. Let's say we're going to start the graph right Oh, we could we could do right here. Let's do this. So this is at um, that's at a half. I think it's right on. Looks like it. Okay. Let's say um, it has one complete cycle. Oh, let's do the way we've been doing it. Let's write on our axes. Figure out our amplitude. That's from minus or five to ten. So amplitude is five again. So y is going to be equal to, we're going to use a negative cosine function because we're starting at the lowest point. So negative 5 cos. 
negative 5 cos. What is the period? So, um, period is easy to read from where? Let's go from here. So it's minus 1 to 2. Minus 1 to 2, that's 3 units. 360 divided by 3 is 120. Okay, so this time I'm going to have to involve a shift here, right? So we have 120 x, which way did we shift here? Cos 120 x. I'm forgetting what we're doing here. So negative cos, we started from here. So that's minus 1. So we're going to add 1. 120x plus 1. Let's do it like this. Degrees. And then we shifted it up 10. 120x. And we've got everything in here. So that's minus 5 and negative 5. Sine 120 x plus 1. Just a minute. I shouldn't have said plus 1 because that's only half of 1 here. Sorry. Let's just fix that. I don't want to make a wrong equation here for you. 120x. And it went to the right, so that's minus. Oh, double, double there. Double mistake. Hope you were following and you caught that before I changed it. That shows how smart I made you. Okay, minus 5, cos 120, x minus 0. 0.5 degrees plus 10. Done. And the last one, let's do that one right here. Ooh, there's so many wiggles in here. But look, it's really easy. It starts at the highest point, and one, one for the period, 1. So that's 360 for our k value. Okay, where's our axis? Let's sketch that in right about here. And that would be at minus 5. So it goes from minus 5, goes up to 5, and down to minus 15. So my a is going to be 10. We're going to use a positive cosine function because we're starting at the highest point. Okay, so what do we say? 10? 10, 10 cos. Um, and we said our k value is going to be 360x degrees, and we shifted it down 5. Ooh, that one was really easy, wasn't it? Okay, so there you go. That's the basics that you need to know in order to do some of the more difficult word problems a little bit later in the chapter. And what I'm going to do is I'll do a few of those questions before I move on to the last section of chapter 6, which is generally just some more applications and modeling. Hope that helped you. Bye.